the other animal. So uh, science in this way, the, these illustrations show how m much more profoundly we are machines than Le Maitre could have known. But uh, there are other changes which uh, uh, evolution has brought additional, completely new dimension, which uh, Le Maitre no doubt might have welcomed as further demonstrating how the human machine. Le Maitre had listed the easily visible aspects of the machine. Now we can see the, the working of the hidden machinery much more. Uh, but apart from the massive, clearly mechanical aspect of the human being demonstrated, what else in the human is machine? Evolution, in fact, has brought with it behavioral machinery, a very elaborate machinery, but still machinery, which we share to a great extent also with animals. Uh, the uh, central feature of evolution, of course, is the genetic programming for the maintenance of the, each species, for the programming male and female behavior for reproduction. Surprisingly, this has been most fully investigated in one of the standard experimental animals, the Drosophila or fruit fly, and here's the brain of the Drosophila melanogaster, much uh, enlarged, of course, but uh, the researchers have been able to show in great detail uh, how the brain of the Drosophila produces the behavior. Uh, here's a rather lengthy statement, but anyhow, courtship is an innate sexually dimorphic behavior observed in animals which have had no experience of other animals, uh, which suggests that the neural circuits that mediate the courtship behavior are developmentally programmed. Uh, in Drosophila, this involves a complex, stereotyped array of dimorphic behaviors that are regulated by a particular gene. The gene is expressed in about 2,000 neurons in the fly brain. It's remarkable that the researchers have been able to do this and, sh and ex explore how these neurons operate. A male fly, fruit fly, can perform the entire courtship sequence even if raised in complete isolation from egg to adult and then presented with a female as its first encounter within another creature. This conjunction is planned by evolution. The same pattern of developmentally planned behavior can be seen with many, many species, including humans. So reproductive behavior is built into the DNA for humans, expressed through the genes and built into brain organization of humans and other species in terms of specific male and female neural complexes. So here's a lot of machinery. Crudely, the evolutionary duty or compulsion uh, of the Drosophilae is to produce more Drosophilae. There is the same duty or compulsion for people to produce more people. Uh, indeed, uh, much uh, nowadays, as a comment, you might say that there's very much unconditional surrender to these evolutionary drives on the part of humans. One might talk reasonably about the gorilla in the living room. So what else is machine besides the clearly biochemical and physiological machinery? What else do we share with animals? Well, there's a lot we share with animals, as Darwin has shown. Feeling uh, as part of uh, the all types of feeling. What made it possible for man not to be altogether a machine, to be a modifiable machine? How comes it that the hum, uh, long machine can now rejig the machine, can be a self-transforming machine? There's been, uh, of course, progress towards the synthetic creation of life, which no doubt will show us a lot more. But what, in fact, do we not share with animals? Uh, this is the most important question, of course. Um, well, very important things. We don't share a sensory motor cortex, which is five times larger than for the chimpanzee. We don't share speech and spoken language and writing, but much else. What about mind and consciousness? Laughter, amazing bodily skills, music, clothes, perhaps the first nearly universal cosmetic, the human predictive planning power, the elaboration of mental simulation and imagery. 
So all these are major things we don't share with animals. Now, about mind, mind, it seems to me, a critical feature is the dynamic system manifesting in thought and action. As for consciousness, as an idea, it's in some ways closer to feeling and degrees of feeling. Animals and all life may have varying degrees of consciousness, but it's less certain whether any animals have mind as an originating, controlling and predictive system. Uh, perhaps surprisingly, understanding of the human mind and human consciousness had advanced rather little since Lemaitre's time. Uh, the question remains how human beings advanced from the shared mechanical animality to the achievements which left other animals far behind. How to uh, explain the emergence of the invid individual and social superstructure which humans have erected on the same physical base as the ape, the dog, the drosophila and so on. Uh, all this human behavior. In our language, coming, Lametri asked what was man before the invention of language. Language is critical for human beings, obviously. The con contribution of language to the ascent of the human being is no novel discovery, of course. Aristotle, Darwin, and many others have mentioned this. How the language made us into the human, how is it that language has made us into the humans we are individually and in groups? What did it do for the ascent of mind? So you've got to separate out what language does in the brain internally and in the human group externally to create a, uh, the human being. So internally in the brain, what does language do internally in the brain? Uh, well, it plays a major role in creating mind, in creating the self, in creating the distinction of I and you, it, making possible prediction and the planning of action, stabilizing understanding, discriminating past, present and future so that we arrive at the concept of time, laboring, labeling memory so that we can get history, analyzing and mirroring the external world, but most fundamentally language reshapes the brain and increases intelligence, something I have, will comment on uh, later. Uh, in relation to the evolutionary growth in intelligence. Now, externally in the group, what does language do? Uh, well, it also does uh, most important things. Language operates at a distance, and writing, of course, operates at a further distance in both time and space. Language makes uh, family relationships conscious by naming uh, communication in the group, of course, is fundamental and the stabilization of groups. Language makes possible the classification of objects and makes uh, possible the accumulation of knowledge and invention. And language, most importantly, can be seen as almost as externalized mind in the group. Language distances us from the immediate reality, mirrors our world and allows us to operate in this mirrored world. So, m mind has op op offered the possibility of freedom from evolutionary drives, which otherwise make humans, uh, like all animals, evolutionary puppets.